Hey guys, welcome back. This is Ty with another video for you. And uh, t this video is going to be about buying arcade games. And the tips I have for you guys if you're looking to buy some arcade games for your house, uh, for like a home arcade, whatever. Um, a lot of the, the advice I have for you guys really comes up, you know, it, it, at first when you start out, it seems like, where am I ever going to find an arcade game? And um, once you know these things I'm going to tell you, you realize it's not all that hard to get an arcade game at all. The uh, difficult thing is controlling yourself and getting exactly what you want. The uh, inclination a lot of people have is when they, at least I had this, and I know a lot of the people did when they're buying their arcade games, is to um, think like, oh boy, I better get this one because when am I going to see it around again? And um, that may be true with some games that are very rare, but a lot of the games that, that most of these guys, most of you guys out there are going to want are fairly common and available, like for example, Galaga. Um, so the best advice I can give you is to decide what it is that you want first and then <clears throat> proceed to look for it in the condition that you are able to handle it. Um, I see a lot of times guys will, will um, not be willing to, for example, one of the things they won't want to do is travel very far. I'll get it, actually, I'll get it that a little bit further down. Um, but first I want to show you is the, um, one of the first places you can actually, uh, pick up some games. Um, I picked up some through here. This is the uh, KLV forums um, right here. Let's see what is that? Uh, that's way too close to the macro lens. But um, what I suggest you do here is you uh, sign up for an account here. Um, we, they had some problems with a lot of uh, spam on the site so they make it now so you have to make a small donation to the museum in order to uh, have an account that can post. So once you're on, um, you get on the forums, and if you can see here, you want to go down to the trading po post, and you see uh, Video Game and Pinball for Sale. You click on that, and what you'll see here is um, the current listing of what's for sale. You should just watch this regularly. Um, one of the things you'll want to note is, uh, is the, where they're located. Um, some of the guys are really good. They put where the, the actual item is for sale. Like here's like Reno, Indiana, Central New Jersey, Nashville. Um, so you want to keep in mind what you're looking for um, in terms of doing this. All right, so that's that's one of the sources. A second source comes down to um, literally just going and finding operators of arcade games. Operators meaning people who own arcade games and have them in, on locations like in a restaurant or um, uh, a uh, laundromat, wherever it may be, a bar, and uh, they actually have the games in those locations and share, I think they share revenue with the owners of the locations, or someone actually owns an arcade. Um, what you do is you go and you find them, and the easiest way to do that is to go, when you're in like a restaurant or a bar, a lot of times there's stickers directly on the uh, games that say uh, the name of the operator on it, um, the ones that I bought from operators had the stickers on them. But what I do is normally when I'm when I'm someplace and I see some arcade games, I'll go up to the machine and I'll uh, look at the sticker on it, see if I can find a sticker. I'll snap a photo with my cell phone, and I will um, call that operator later on and say, "Hey, um, you know, I'm interested in arcade games. What do you have? Um, you know, you make friends with them a little bit or whatever. You just you know are nice to them. Um, you know, understand that they're not out. You know, they're." that's not a priority to them to sell you a game um, they're mostly doing it to you as a favor um, uh, the best thing you can do is to help them out in what they they need a lot of times some operators have a lot of games in storage older ones that are no longer making money on route um, and if you help them sell off a few of them um, to other people they might give you a better price on them or they might be more inclined you know they're not really a lot of times they're not, they're not looking to sell one game here to this person, one game to that person. They're looking to unload a whole bunch of them at once, clean out their warehouse, um, and uh, you know move on with whatever they're doing. So that that's a that's one of the things I uh, another one of the sources. So you got the first one is the KLV forums. The second one is to um, get to know some operators in your area, um, and the final one is a good old Craigslist. I mean, you can go on eBay um, and. You know, I've looked on eBay, but the prices are just outrageous on eBay. But so, one of the things about Craigslist is it's um, very difficult to um, keep track of what's going on out there. 
And so what I have is a solution here for you. Um, if you have an Android phone or a iPhone, there's um, some apps out there. I'm going to bring my phone up here to show you. Let's see here. Oops. Okay, so here's my phone. I'm going to go to my apps. I'm going to go Craigslist Notify. Now, is this thing focusing? It's not focusing very well here. Does that help? No, not one bit. Okay, so... All right, let's see, can I get a little further away? Does that help? Well, you have to deal with being folk, a little bit fuzzy here, but this is the app, and it's it's a phenomenal app. Um, one of the great things about it is you could set it to search multiple areas. Um, and what I have in here is I have two searches. One is it's, it's got Arcade, and it's got minus Xbox. That excludes anything as Xbox, minus PlayStation, minus GameCube, and minus Fisher, like as in Fisher-Price. There's a lot of Fisher-Price arcades, out uh, arcade-ish games that they sell, and... You're really not interested in those. So, what you go, it'll give you alerts too. So you go into this here, and you'll see a bunch of things listed. Now, I have in this tool, I have all of New York State, all of Massachusetts, Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, New Jersey, pencil, a uh, good portion of Pennsylvania in here. And uh, a lot of people think, well, that's way too far to travel for an arcade game. But a thing to note is when you're doing this, is, um your expertise when you go to buy a game uh, at repairing them now they're all going to need repair at some point in time but when you buy one you don't want to bring something in if you're not like if it's got a lot of issues with it and you've never repaired an arcade game before it's not a good thing to start out on you're going to get real frustrated with it so um while you may see a donkey kong close to you that's inex um, inexpensive and it might have a lot of issues sometimes it's better to drive four or five hours to go pick up a Donkey Kong in much better shape that might cost a little bit more or equal price. And the reason that it comes down to this is that when you really think about it, yeah, let's say you have a, you know, a five-hour one-way trip. So you got a 10 hours round trip, um, which seems real far. Um, but when you really get down to it, when you start re repairing these things, you're going to spend way more than 10 hours working on these things. It doesn't seem like it when you, when you start out, and it's like, oh, I'll just do an hour here, an hour there at night. Um, but you, it'll adds up pretty quickly. I can tell you it adds up very quickly. I can never keep everything. I never could do everything I want. So spending the time to drive initially to get a good game in good shape is worth it. I'm going to tell you that right now. So what I would say is make your range um, as large as you feel comfortable doing when you're doing this. So here we got some, I'm looking at here, $500 full-size arcade games. We'll go and take a look at it. And we've got, um, let's see, a pinball game. This is a Pac-Man that's been converted to a golf game. We've got a Donkey Kong Jr. here that's been converted to Super Mario Brothers versus Super Mario Brothers, and a Blitz 99. Um, those are all okay. They're not particularly f f fantastic games. Um, you got a Golden Tee for 1500 that's way overpriced. Here we go. we got someone that's a spammer. We're just going to flag that guy right there. Okay, the very nice arcade commando, two hundred fifty dollars. This is right near me. Um, that's not a bad price for a working commando. There, it's a little little on the higher side. You'll find you can find them a lot cheaper sometimes. Really depends on the game. Um, see, like the smart cycle. There's a Fisher Price thing, but they still slip through. Uh, police trainer, police trainer, three twenty five. That's on a higher price for what I would pay for anything like that. Um, See, we still got Nintendo 64 slipping through. I didn't want to... That's a hard thing to exclude because you want to exclude the word Nintendo and uh, 64 isn't going to do you much good and it might actually exclude some things you don't want to exclude. All right, so let's see. They got a last one for rent. Um, here we go. Dedicated Neo Geo four-slot MVS cabinet right here in Boston for $200. And that's a nice-looking cabinet. Look at that. 200 bucks. It's got Bubble Bobble, World Heroes, King of Fighters 94, King of Fighters 95. Um, and uh, that's, I mean, you know, it says it's seen as better days, but I'm looking at that. You got a little damage along the bottom there, but that's pretty good Neo Geo right there for that price. I've seen them for cheaper, but, you know, that's that's a very good price there. All right, foosball. Here's a Donkey Kong. Um, let's see, this one's in Long Island. That's a Donkey Kong Jr. Let's see. Oh, geez, he just wants 100 bucks for it. Wow, that's nice and cheap. 
All right. It's probably gone by now. Um, one of the things you also want to keep in mind is when you're doing this is that you want to be able, when you're searching for something, um, you may not be able to do this always, but when you see something out there, you want to get in your vehicle. If you want to call the person first and get in your vehicle and tell them you're headed there and you can have the cash, cash in your hand and be ready to take it home. Um, don't mess around, especially on Craigslist. You get a lot of flakes out there, um, people who are well, might change the mind or raise the price or sell to somebody else. And it's it's a war zone out there when you try to get something. Someone will get it before you if you don't go and get it right away. Um, so it's good to watch, too, even before you decide what you're going to get. You just have to remember that, all right, I'm in watch mode. I'm not going to buy anything yet because what you'll see is you get a good idea of the prices that are out there. Um, a Super Cobra for $800. That better be pretty pretty nice to be 800 bucks, And that's a... That actually doesn't look bad at all. Um, I don't know if it's a conversion, but it definitely is a, it's a Stern cabinet, and it was in Stern, so it's, it could be original. It's made by Konami, but the cabinet was uh, distributed by Stern. Okay, here, let's take a look at anything more. An Arkanoid cocktail. Now, that's obviously conversion. $599 is pretty darn expensive. Now, it's in New York City, so and that looks that's a Midway conversion. That was probably like a Ms. Pac-Man, something along that lines. Um... <laughs> Sorry for the sniff in there. Um, get a, a Pac-Man cocktail. That's a 60 in one there. Now those are those are um, a pirated system, and uh, personally, I would suggest that you not get a 60 in one. First thing, they're going to charge you way more than they're worth. Um, one of those 60 in one boards will cost you under 100 dollars, and you could put it in any JAMA cabinet. Um, JAMA is a type of uh, connections. All later cab, all later arcade machines um, um, in the late 90s, late 80s, early 90s, um, and on, have a JAMA connection. So um, it's an easy thing to do if you ever want to put one in one of your machines. I personally don't like them. The emulation is not, right on, it's not perfect on them. And it's better just to have a good, dedicated machine than to have um, 60 games in one cabinet. You can never decide what you want. I mean, it's the same thing with my Neo Geo. I've got a, I've got a 121 cartridge, 121 game cartridge for it. And... Uh, when I had that in my machine all the time, I would I just wouldn't play my Neo Geo. Um, I just couldn't decide what I wanted to play. But now I just put the other carts I have. I have like, I don't know, 20 to 30 games for it. Um, and I just put I just pick a random bunch of games, pop them in there, and it cycles through the the games in it. And I actually play it more often. Um, here's a Donkey Kong Jr. for 600. And that's a high end of what you're going to pay for one. And especially one with a... With a uh, Moroso um, sticker stuck on the front of it. Um, <laughs> it's spelled awesome. A W E S U M. Um, he says, yeah, I know they go for eight hundred to seventeen fifty. Now that's an eBay price if you ever see one. Um, that I wouldn't even bother with this guy right here. He's gonna he's gonna give you a hard time. Um, and a lot of times you'll see it listed again later. So. Or you'll see that what happens sometimes. People are really anxious to get something. They decide they're going to get it, and they just buy it right away. And they'll spend the eight fifty for it. Um, that's somebody starting out, and then they'll regret it later on. Okay, here it says arcade game three hundred dollars. I like the ones that say arcade game because a lot of times people don't even know what they've got, and so they'll just put up some price there, and it'll be a surprise what you'll see here. So this is a uh, let's see, it's a bally uh, bump and jump. Uh, not anything anybody's crazy about there. And it's got water damage on it. Um, that's a bit expensive. That's too much for that. And we got a, a Tetris, which is going to be a conversion of some game. And when I say conversion, that means that a game is was originally something else, and then uh, an operator uh, took the game, said it wasn't making money anymore, and bought a kit, which converts it to some other game. And this is this is a real rough-looking uh, conversion there. I wouldn't spend 300 for that any day. Uh, here we go. Street Fighter II Champion Edition game. Now, what's this? This is $50. That seems really cheap. It says, okay, Street Fighter II Champion Edition cabinet's pretty rough. Chips and scratches. Monitor Cree is not, not working, although game starts and plays. You can hear it. So that's one. That's one. Um, you know, if it's right next to you and $50, you might say, you know, I'll go take a look at it. Um, but I, I don't know if you should buy that, um, especially if you're starting out. I wouldn't get yourself into one without a working monitor. Make sure you got one that's got a good working monitor in it when you're first starting out. Um, now I've got a stack of monitors in my basement I can... You always pop a different one in there, but um, you know when you first start out, you don't want to deal with that. 
uh, Galaxian $675. There's one you don't want to buy. It doesn't matter how good a Galaxian is. You never, you should never spend $675 for it. I see really nice Galaxian selling for 200 bucks at the most, uh, you know, at a reasonable price. Um, let's see here. And these guys are selling like it's got a whole bunch of games in here. Let's see. He says just got a whole list of them. All right, so this is probably someone that knows what they're worth, approximately. I mean, you might want to call him up, find out what he's got, see what he's dealing with prices. Okay, Space Invaders, $200. Can't really see it. It's been nice to see some photos there. That Arkanoid for uh, $649 again. See, it's been listed again. These are older as I'm going down. A pole Position, $150. Now, Pole Position is uh, infamous for being one that's, that is... Um, very prone to not working. Um, says complete and not working. And I would say if it doesn't, work, if it's a pole position and it doesn't work, you probably don't want it. <laughs> I mean, unless you've got some boards for it, because it's going to be a pain to get it working right. So he's got a hundred fifty dollars firm. I wouldn't spend the hundred fifty dollars for it unless the cabinet is just beautiful and you've got a working pole position. You want to just, you know, put the two together and make something really nice. Okay, so we've got a Neo Geo six slot for six. $550, but you see, I'm not going to keep going with this too much, but I just want to show you, um, you know, by having a large search range, you can actually, you know, pick up, cast a large net, you can see some prices, you'll see like in New York City, things are much more expensive in like the metropolitan areas, and as you get out in more rural areas, the games tend to be a better price, um, but it's actually, your best, best locations are small cities, that's where you're going to get the good, the really good deals. So there's there's that one. I'm just gonna show you here. We got uh, I have a separate search for Galaxian, and uh, and uh, so this one's good to just let's say you're looking for a particular game, you can uh, use that as well. But I really wanted to say that this this application here it's free. It's um let's see here. Um, try to find what the it just it's not. I don't know how to get it so you can see what the application's called, but it's called Craigslist Notify. So, that's this is a really good tool to find, a tool to have. It's great to have in your phone because you'll see when the deal comes up right away, and uh, that's that's really important to know. Um, because if if you check it like you know the next you know oh I'm gonna check every night, you're gonna miss everything. Because people normally list things you know either before they go to bed, first thing in the morning, um, on their lunch break. And if you really want to get something, or on the week, you know, on weekends too, um, you really want to be ready to go at any point in time, especially if you have that ability to do that. I, I don't have that on the weekdays. You know, I work a job. I can't go running off to get something. So I, I miss out on, you know, some really good deals here and there. Um, but, you know, I've got 17 uh, games in my basement, so I'm not looking to find any, get anything new now. Um, really, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to arrange things. It's not like I'm crammed in here or anything like that, but um, I definitely want to make sure I got everything set up, you know, nice and the way I want it, um, rather than just having having games to have games. I want to have it with purpose. Um, so that's, that's the thing. What happens is when you first start out and you've got, you just start grabbing games here and there, and you can grab things that you really might not want to have later on and kind of regret that you got them but then at the same time you're like well do i want to get rid of it like for example i i picked up a radical bikers i i got that for parts and uh it worked and my kids really loved the game so now i have it now um so i can't get rid of it but i th i think to myself boy i'd rather have a, a hang on which is a very similar game to radical bikers um but I can't get rid of the Radical Bikers because my kids like it, even though I think that they might actually like to hang on more or uh, out, outrun. So, you know, just keep that in mind when you start this out, when you start start with this hobby. It's a very, uh, it can you get really deep into it real quickly. Um, and you want to get things that are nice, not some piece of junk that you're going to regret that you got. Um, I myself, I picked up some cabinets that are, um, you know, aren't perfect, um, but... I know what I'm getting into before I get them. But, uh, yeah, so just want to share that with you guys, and uh, I hope uh, you get into this hobby and enjoy it. Um, it's a fun hobby to get into. Uh, don't go in over your head. Uh, take your time. Pick out, you know, be very careful. 
what you're going to get, and I think you'll be very happy with it. Um, so I'll talk to you later, guys.